was singing today when I was working in Lee Davis I, Hall. I'm, she said I was an owl. She said I was like an owl. That's okay. a cute, like a cute owl. So uh, let's uh, kick it off. What do we got first? Okay, first up, we've got uh, two by 10 pin IDC cables. Um, these are useful for like JTAG debugging, but also there's like boards once in a while that have IDC connectors on them. Uh, we already stuck a couple different sizes, but uh, I don't remember why, but I decided that these would be handy to stock as well. So uh, good, good job me. I don't remember. Probably yeah. JTAG debugging. Um, if you want to extend your J-Link out and then use an adapter on the other side. Next up. Um, next up, I really like these um, bent metal, kind of like heavy duty um, rework station. Uh, this is great for hot air, but also soldering in general. Um, so it's got this metal plate and it's a little bit thick and then there's these magnetic posts um, that come with it and the metal posts unscrew and then you can um, you know, attach your PCB on it securely and then there's two um, alligator clips as well. So let me Show we're gonna, how it works. We're going to get the uh, thing here. I like that we have to sort through the, the Dune Chris knives to get yeah, to the new products. This is uh, kind of a dream. Okay, so um, uh, each uh, PCB here comes with um, one of these little magnetic uh, feetsy things. So this unscrews and then um, inside there's a little like a spacer doodad. And then the PCB slides into the spacer. And then you uh, screw down the thumb screw. And when you do that, um, it secures, sorry, go. Yeah, secures that. And then we do the other side. So they give you four, but you don't need all four. You can, you know, secure it down with two. And now um, this is nice and solid and um, it's lifted off the board so that if you have a double-sided board or you have, you know, something on the bottom you don't want to overheat. Um, but you can uh, solder and rework it um, and adjust it and move it all on this um, nice metal base. And then there's also little like alligator clippy type things. And they even put uh, the protectors on the alligator clip ends, which I really like. So it's a nice little uh, work station. It's, it's very compact, um, but I like how uh, flexible it is. You can do any size board. Okay, next up, let's uh, go to a wide assortment of tiny micro SD cards. And you're gonna ask, why would I need these? But the lady is gonna tell you. Mm, so these are exactly, they're micro SD cards in small sizes, like 64 megabytes, like 256 megabytes, like uh, 512 megabytes. Yeah. And then last week we put in the 128. You, you, you're gonna need these, trust me. Okay, so the thing about these is they're, they're actually just plain SD. Um, so not SDHC or SDXC, which is really good when you're dealing with old devices. If you have an old device and you're like, I plugged in a micro SD card and it doesn't recognize it um, because the micro SD card is too large or the micro SD cards these days act kind of funky. Um, these cards are, are they're, they're very basic and they're very plain and we love them for that. Um, there's nothing funky or special going on. They're just class four. Um, they have small capacities, but they're also inexpensive. And if you're, you know, doing um, a lot of data loggers and you need, you know, 50 SD cards, um, you don't need a lot of space. It can add up if you're using eight or 16 gigabyte cards. You know, they're, basically the price of SD cards stays the same, but the capacity increases. Um, so we wanted to find ones that really were only a couple dollars. And uh, so we've got a range uh, from 512 down to 64 megabytes, um, very handy. I've already had a couple people contact us and say this was great for um, reviving some old technology that wasn't happy with the new yeah. um, SDXC cards. Yeah, and you know you can get the adapter, put it in, and then now you're back in business. Also, if you're doing micro uh, controllers like we are, and there's an SD card slot, um, you know we want to be able to get some of these things out and have a pretty good price point. So a 64 megabyte card might be all you need. Yep. Next up. We've got uh, this cool keyboard case that also is a perfect case uh, for a Pi 400. So what we got it for, but it was also probably good for your 60% uh, cards. Um, so uh, the case is kind of like a hard case. It's padded, it's got a, like a nice little um, so handle. It's like a Nintendo Switch case, it's cool. It's a little bit like a Nintendo Switch case. And it's like perfect for your Pi 400. Uh, we recommend uh, putting it um, face down because there's like these little nubbins on the bottom. Um, that will protect the keys. And then there's a pocket that you can fit stuff in like, uh, you know, a mouse or an HDMI cable. You can fit the, um, the USB power supply cable that comes with the Pi 400 kit. I will say just like you have to arrange it in a way so it's like the, the pointy end doesn't uh, go against the thicker part of the Pi 400 and that way you can actually close the case. It's just a little bit of a tight fit, um, but it, uh, it does fit. 
And um, okay, you want to shut off? Yeah, I got to the images. Okay, so it zips closed. It's quite nice. And then here's what it looks like open. And here's another way of putting it. But if you fit it this way, um, yeah. just be careful if you have like the power supply. Okay, let's. Uh, oh, I thought I'll mean, we'll just actually hold it up because yeah, it's, it's quite okay. large. So it's like this, and then yeah, we have it with the um, with the power supply. But um, of course, if you don't need a power supply, it, it, it folds up much much nicer. And yeah, if you have keyboards, you can use it for keyboards too. Keeps. But we got it specifically for the Pi 400. Keyboards, keeps, and soon keyboards. Yeah, keyboards. And then um, it's a nice hard case. Uh, so it's got it's not like hard hard, but it's you know firm. It's not soft. Uh, so you can definitely put this in uh, a backpack or luggage or whatever. Or take it outside. And while it's not like waterproof, like if you dunk it underwater, it, it's, there's a little bit of gap in the zipper, um, but it'll definitely keep it from getting dirty. Mm. So good for students, I think, if they're carrying their Pi 400s to and from uh, yeah. workshops or classes, or if you just want to um, have a safe place Get to keep it. Get the accessory. It's cool. Um, and uh, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, besides our team here at Adafruit, our community, our customers, case. By the way, there's lots of great folks from Minnesota here tonight. You lived in Minnesota for a while. Just for I, like a summer. I yeah. lived there a long time. And uh, there's a bunch of people. I think we have some mutual acquaintances and more. Our CFOs from Minnesota, there's all sorts of good things yeah, Minnesota. in Minnesota. Anyways, um, Minnesota's also a star show. But Don't the, you know? But the, thing, the yeah. thing that uh, folks should consider, and this is why I'm doing it this week, is an Adafruit gift certificate. So get them an Adafruit gift certificate because it is the best gift certificate. It never expires. We don't market to you. We don't harvest your emails. We don't spam the person who's going to get it. We don't do anything like that. All it is is a gift certificate, and they can use it forever at the Adafruit store um, because there's going to be some stuff that's in stock and some stuff that's not in stock. So stock up on gift certificates. Yeah. You can you can get a limit of them. They're they're you know they're virtual, and we have a really nice graphic you can print out and more. And that is this week's. New products. Thank you. Yeah. New, 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 new.